is the Creative Church Show. Tips, tricks, and shortcuts making church media easy for you and your team. All in under 10 minutes each week. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Creative Church Show. My name is Josh from joshblankenship.me. I'm excited to be back with you for episode number 44. In this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about video, how to get better video quality at your church. Now, we're not going to spend a ton of time talking about the technical side of things, like what kind of lenses are best, what kind of cameras shoot best where. I want to give you some basic principles, some basic ideas, so that no matter what kind of equipment you're using, you can get better, higher quality video. Now, most of us that are shooting videos at church probably didn't get to spend a lot of time on movie sets. We probably haven't spent a lot of time in the classroom setting even either learning how to get better video. So these 10 things are kind of things that I've learned along my journey. They're kind of things that um, maybe the experts won't tell you, but I'm going to tell you them because I've actually experienced them shooting out there in the real world. So let's go ahead and jump in. I want to start with number one, and it's probably the most important, and that is to make sure that you plan. So a great story can always be ruined if you don't plan it right. There are hundreds of little tiny small details that go into even a quick one to two minute video. If you've ever popped on Elevation Church or New Spring or some of these bigger churches and seen some of their incredible storytelling videos, you can tell right off the bat that that was planned out and they knew exactly what they were going for. It didn't just happen. So planning um, the equipment you need, who you need to be on set, um, what exactly you want it to look and feel like are going to greatly increase your chances of succeeding and getting that high quality video. The second thing after you plan is to practice. Now, again, I've learned this the hard way in my early days of creating video, uh, but to this day I actually practice taking the shots before even the talent arrives. So I will um, get to the set, I'll get it all set up, and then I will take my camera and I will look through the lens and I will practice the shots that I want to get. And so this is always going to help you eliminate mistakes. It's always going to help make your video look more professional by taking the time to walk through with a camera um, and see the results before even your pastor or the talent or whoever you're interviewing shows up. So make sure that you take that time to, to do a little bit of practice. Number three is you've got to stabilize. Now, I used to think that I was um, some sort of exception to the rule. So there were times when I was shooting a video kind of quick and I'd be like, ah, you know what? I don't need a tripod. I'll be good. So I would go out there with my hands and try to keep the video stable. But every single time when I got it back and put it on the computer, getting ready to edit it, I was so mad at myself because the video was a little shaky. Sometimes I'd go out of focus. So the best tip I can give you is to try to have a tripod or some sort of stabilizing thing that you have for every single video. I guarantee you that when people watch your video online or during the Sunday services, they're going to thank you for keeping it in focus and stable. The fourth thing that I've learned over the past couple of years is to know my camera's limits. So the first thing the first step, I guess, if you will, to getting that high quality video is to know exactly what your camera can and cannot do. Some DSLRs are really good in low light situations and others like our cell phones and our iPhones are not so good in low light. So if you're shooting with a phone, you have to understand that going into the video that no matter how hard you try, no matter how much you want it to be, iPhones are just not that good in low light, so you need to make sure that anytime you're shooting with the phone, you've got a lot of light, whether it's outside or you've got um, lighting. Just make sure that you know what your camera can and cannot do. Number five is all about location. So sometimes a really good, powerful quality story can be ruined by a bad location. So you wanna make sure that you're choosing a location that is relevant 
and also enhances the story. So if you're shooting, um, you know, a video about how somebody uh, learned how to give back to the church financially, and you're shooting it on an overpass over a busy highway, that doesn't really make sense, and it ends up actually distracting people from that powerful message. So make sure that you're choosing a location that enhances your overall story and doesn't distract people by being too busy or not making any sense. Make sure that your location matches your story. The next thing I've learned is to be ready to shoot a ton. Now, you might be tempted, like I have in the past, to take only the shots that you think you need. So if you're in a hurry and you didn't plan correctly, your pastor calls you and says, hey, I want to shoot a quick video, you might think about only shooting the bare minimum. But I promise you that you're going to regret that decision, or you're going to make whoever's editing the video, which probably is you, really, really mad. So a great storyteller is able to get those shots that no one else sees, and most of the time, um, it's not the shots of the actual interview or the person's face, but it's those extra shots that are going to enhance and make a big difference in your videos. Seventh thing I've learned is to change angles and positions. Now, don't get overly crazy with this. Don't be uh, changing the angle of the camera every two seconds during the video. That can get a little crazy, but the best thing a amateur videographer can do is to get in the habit of shooting different angles and positions. If every single shot you take is taken from the same angle, your viewers, if you're playing videos on a regular basis, are going to grow tired of watching the same thing. Um, so definitely you don't want a video that bores people to tears. So make sure that you're changing the angle and the position, getting different and unique shots. That's one way that you can really increase your video quality. The next thing you can do is to stop zooming in. So you never want to zoom in in the middle of a shot unless you're doing some sort of B-roll that's for creative effect or some creative shot. Most camera zooms are going to cause your video footage to look wobbly and maybe even lose a little bit of focus. So I would highly recommend if you want to get that zoom look to get a cheap slider, you can get them for like 30 bucks on Amazon. I got one the other day that was, I think, $25 on Amazon. And it gives you that cool zoom effect without losing the quality in your video. So the next thing you need to do is get some depth. Now, this article, again, like I said, is not intended to be a technical guide. But adding some depth of field is one of the easiest ways to get more professional shots. Depth of field is simply that look um, when you're isolating your subject um, and kind of blurring out the background. So if you're using a DSLR, um, it's best to stick to a lower f-stop like 2.8 um, if you've got the lens to do that to achieve this look. It just gives it a nice clean professional look at a fraction of the cost. The last thing that's important for you to do if you want to get better church videos, higher quality videos, is to edit like a pro. Now, most of us have probably never gone to school to be editors. Like I said, we've probably never been uh, on a movie set or a television set learning from the experts on how to edit. So if you're lucky enough to be able to edit your own footage, there are a few things that you've got to keep in mind. And the first is that you need to leave long sequences unedited because it come because it becomes way too boring to the viewer. So if you're leaving long clips unedited and there's nothing happening, it can become very boring to the viewer. So if it's an interview and all you do is have one camera angle for an entire minute, then maybe you switch to an alternate angle for 10 seconds. That can be kind of boring. So you want to make sure, like we talked about earlier, to have that B-roll footage that you can cut to or close-ups of the person's face. But make sure that your transition shots are smooth and doesn't distract from the overall story. So when you're editing, um, there's not necessarily any magic formula when you're editing. Just make sure that you're watching it from the perspective of somebody 
who doesn't know the ending of the story, who doesn't know what the story is about, so that you can tell them that story through the video. So obviously, guys, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, telling stories on video is really going to be the wave of the future as most of our social networks and things go higher on video. So I just encourage you, if you're an amateur videographer and you're shooting videos for your church, to make sure that you get out there, practice, be open to new ideas, do some research, and help people see the stories you want them to see through your lens. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the show. I hope to see you back here next week for episode number 45. If you've got a quick second, make sure you stop by joshblankenship.me. Um, join our conversation over there. We've got a lot of cool stuff happening um, also, make sure to check out virtualmediapastor.com where uh, we help pastors do what they do best um, by taking over their social media and creative arts. Thank you again so much for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great week.